Thanks everyone for taking some time out of their evening to uh, join this webinar. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so some things we'll touch base on tonight. So just an update on some fall metrics. Um, we'll go through the anatomy of balance and what is involved with that. And then when you attend physical therapy for, you know, they might be referred for just general medical or maybe it's an actual, you've already had a fall. Um, but what is involved in the PT assessment. And then we'll touch base on the, the treatment aspects of PT and then when to, you know, maybe when talk to your doctor uh, about getting some medical assistance and then uh, feel free to shoot any questions uh, over um, along the way. So uh, definition of a fall uh, is defined as an unplanned descent to the floor with or without injury to the patient. Um, but what about a near fall? You know, there's really um, not so much of a definition there. I think that's something that happens to a lot of us, um, maybe on a regular basis. You know, we stub our toe or uh, we lose our balance, but we don't actually fall to the floor. So um, and then, you know, just loosely, some people may define a fall just as only if they hit the floor. So, um, you know, this can be a controlled event or an uncontrolled event. Um Believe it or not, and, and I have a dog at home, but, you know, a lot of dog related trip and falls and injuries. But, you know, um, if you have a good balance, you know, some of these falls may be prevented. So the rates of falls, um, more than one in four Americans over the age of 65 fall each year, resulting in the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injury. Each year, 3 million older people are treated in the ER for fall injuries. And each year, at least 300,000 older people are hospitalized for hip fracture. And more than 95% of hip fractures are caused by falling. So uh, we won't talk too much uh, about fractures, but of course, that's one of the concerns from having a fall. So some different risks for falling. Uh, the patient's age, the person's age. Polypharmacy is uh, basically how many prescription medications that you take. And of course, you know, you're sharing your non-prescription medications with your medical doctor as well. Uh, if you take four or more prescription medications, your risk for falling is higher. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you stop taking those medications, but um, if you feel off balance, that's certainly something that you could talk with your physician about uh, and, and go over those things and see, um, you know, if any change is necessary. Physical inactivity is, is a big one. Um, if we're not using our body, we tend to lose it. Um, so, you know, getting active is so important and, and really finding something that you enjoy as you age. The inability to walk and talk is something that I, that I like to uh, bring up. So uh, I'm sure you've been around someone, maybe a family member or a friend, and you ask them a question and then they turn to you and stop walking and in order to answer uh, your question. So uh, that actually increases your risk of falling by five. And you're also more likely to fall in the next six months if, uh, if that's the case. Uh, and of course, anxiety and depression you'll see related to that. But that probably ties into the physical inactivity. Um, you know, if you're fearful of moving, that's certainly going to... Uh, increase your risk of falling. And then of course, a fear of falling. It's interesting. I've had patients where they're seeing me for a fall risk, but they haven't actually fallen. So you're just dealing with more of getting them comfortable with what they can and can't do so that they're, you know, use better judgment with their daily activities. So what is actually involved in balance? The anatomy of it, there's three systems that are involved in our balance. Uh, the first is our somatosensory system, which is our sensation in our feet. And um, we'll go into each one of these a little uh, more deeply in a, in a moment. Our vestibular system, which is our inner ear, uh, and then also our vision. Notice that strength, our lower extremity strength is not one of those three. So some people will say, well, I have a flat foot on the left, or I, I've had an ankle surgery in the past. And, you know, those things are important to, to know, but maybe not as important in balance as, uh, as you may think. 
So um, if you type into Google uh, cool shoes, that's the picture that pops up the first one. So that's what that is. Uh, pretty cool shoe there. But uh, your somatosensory system is what we can feel through our feet and things like uh, neuropathy, diabetic or otherwise are going to impact that. So, um, you know, if, if you notice that the sensation in your feet is changing, that's definitely something you want to talk to your physician about. Um, you don't want to let that kind of go on untreated. So if you can't feel your foot, doesn't mean that you're automatically going to fall all over the place, but it's definitely a, a contributor for falling. Our vestibular system, you know, when you think of dizziness, um, dizziness is the most common reason to see your physician over the age of 65. Um, and a lot of those may be vestibular related, but you think of dizziness with head or body movement. Uh, and it's important to know that dizziness is not normal as we age. So if, uh, you know, again, that's not necessarily the full scope of this talk, but if you're having dizziness, uh, do something about it. Talk to your doctor, talk to your therapist. Um, there actually sometimes can be relatively easy exercises to um, improve uh, the dizziness. So some things that I may hear, you know, fear when I'm closing my eyes, I'm getting dressed or in the shower, grooming. Um, I feel like I'm getting dizzy. I cannot lie flat because I get dizzy when I when I lay flat. Uh, and then, you know, dizziness with sudden movement. So some things that people may say. And then, of course, your vision. So it is normal for our vision to get worse as we age. But, you know, that's obviously managed by your eye doctor. Uh, and a concern for falls is... Um, you know, as that prescription changes, we need, there's an adjustment period that most of us are well aware of. So, um, you know, multifocal lenses, think bifocals, um, which could be a transitional lens that may increase our risk of falls. So um, as you change between the distance frame and the close-up frame, think of stepping up on a parking curb, you know, that, that can be very difficult. Um, along, especially if you have some other factors at play. So just a little bit about what actual balance is. So we have our center of mass, which if we were to find the spot in our body that uh, where the weight is most balanced, it's going to be kind of behind your belt buckle, so to speak. That's, that's your center of mass. Your base of support uh, supports your center of mass. Our base of support, we're bipedal, so we walk on two feet. So if we stand with our feet, let's let's say shoulder width apart, maybe 12 inches apart, that's our base of support. If we happen to hold a cane or we use a walker or some other type of assistive device, that widens our base of support. So that's how a cane is going to improve our balance. And then we use our base of support um, through what's called limits of stability. So how far can we move our center of mass outside of our base of support and maintain our balance. So if someone has really good balance, they can move their center of mass the, where all their body weight is way far out of where their feet are and not lose their balance. But we have these different strategies to help maintain our balance. So the picture on the left there, the far left, you can see that the person is leaning forward, but keeping their body fully straight. So we call that an ankle strategy. If we need to go beyond our ankle strategy, uh, so think of someone giving us a little push. If it's just a slight push, we can use our ankles to recover. If someone gives us a little bit more of a moderate push, that picture in the middle, we use a hip strategy. So you can see the hips are moving. And then say, I really give someone a big push. Um, that should say a stepping strategy. Uh, um, instead of a balance strategy, but we actually have to take a step. So sometimes going through this in the clinic is uh, something that I'll work on with a patient just so that they're aware of these, these different strategies. So going a little bit into the assessment, I think this is important uh, for you to know, just so you can kind of get an idea, well, how, how do you really know I'm at a risk for falling? Um, so one of the classic tests that PTs can do is called a timed up and go test or a tug for short. And basically we tell the patient to go ahead, 
when I tell you to stand up from a chair as quickly and as safely as you can walk past a piece of tape, which is about 10 feet away on the floor, turn around and then sit back down. And uh, there's a lot of research where if you are under 10 seconds, that you're at a low risk for falling. If you're between 10 and 13, you're at a medium risk for falling. And then if you're above 13 seconds, you're at a high risk for falling. So um, that's a kind of a quick and dirty way to, to take a, a good look at, you know, is this person at a risk for falling? Another test that may be done by a physical therapist is called a six minute walk test. Now this is something you, you probably could do on your own um, and not necessarily that you have to, but it's how far can you walk in six minutes? Now, if you use a cane, use a cane. If you use a walker, use a walker. If you don't use a device, then you know, um, you can see here, uh, there's some norms from the University of Delaware. You see the age on the left and M for male, F for female. So if you're a 60 year old female, you should be able to walk 1,765 feet in six minutes. Uh, it It is been interesting for me as a, a clinician to see some people that, you know, they're surprised how long six minutes really is to do continuous walking. Um, so I think it's good to kind of get expectations for this. And then on onwards and upwards uh, between the ages of 80 and 89, that drops to uh, the high 1200s, the low 1300s for males. Another test that can be done is a 30 second sit to stand. So how many full repetitions can you stand up and sit down from a chair in 30 seconds using your arms on the armrest? Um, so that you know significantly decreases as we age, but still even in our early nineties, nine repetitions in 30 seconds. Um, you know, we all stand up and sit down from a chair every day, but how many times have we actually challenged ourselves to see what our, our max effort could be? And is that normal for our age? Lower extremity strength, I had to put it in here. I mentioned earlier that this isn't necessarily directly involved in balance, but you know it's good to know if someone does have foot drop or you know history of weakness from a previous back operation, what have you. So we'll look at how does the, the major muscle groups in the legs work? Can the ankle pull up and, and push down? Can can your knee push out with appropriate strength? And then, you know, can your hips move too? Also involved in a physical therapy evaluation and assessment uh, is what's called proprioception testing sensation. That looks like, like a uh, torture device there on the right. Uh, but some therapists will use that to determine, do you have sensation for sharp and dull touch? Um, and then also grabbing the toe as in the bottom picture, having the patient close their eyes. And then I'm asking them, am I moving your toe up or down? And that's what's called proprioception or our body's ability to know where it is in space. So if that is impaired, again, that's maybe tied in with some type of neuropathy. And those are things that uh, the physician should be made aware of. Static balance, the way that I do static balance, so the uh, the modified cat sib or the, the modified clinical test for sensory integration and balance is a mouthful. Uh, there's four different conditions that we'll look at. So again, if you it's kind of sort of a pass fail. So condition one, you're in what's called Romberg stance where your feet are together on the floor and uh, your arms are crossed on your chest. So if you can hold that position for 30 seconds, then we pr proceed to condition two, where all we do is close your eyes in that position. Now, a lot of people, uh, they get nervous with that. Um, but again, the therapist is right there with them, making sure that they're safe. If they can pass condition two well, then they go to condition three, which is eyes open, standing on an Airx pad, which is in the picture there. Um, that blue pad, that foam pad, if you've been to therapy before, you're familiar with it. And then condition four, you're still on the foam pad and your eyes are closed. So feet together, arms crossed, eyes closed on the foam pad. And that should be something that we all can do for 30 seconds. Um, even if someone has, you know, a, a neurologic condition or they've had a stroke in the past, that's something that, you know, should be able to be done. It's, it's not an unrealistic expectation. 
So that's static balance. Dynamic balance, things like functional reach. We talked about the limits of stability. How far can you reach forward, reach outside your base of support before you lose your balance? And that can be measured. And then there's other uh, tests like the Tinetti Berg balance test, dynamic gait index. There's a lot of tools that therapists have to determine how your balance is. Are you at a risk for falling? So moving forward into the treatment for balance, you know, some things that I like to tell my balance patients is this is going to be fun. Um, you know, it, it may not sound like it, but every time I see someone for balance, it's going to be progressive. It's going to be individualized. The, the treatment, um, you may come in and have mastered something that we were working on last time. So we're going to change it up. We're going to make it different. Uh, this is going to be safe. So if you um, are worried about falling, yes, we have to make it safe. So I, I tell people having you fall in, in the clinic is not good for business. This is not something that, um, you know, so we're definitely going to make it safe. It's going to be fun, progressive, individualized, 45 to 60 minutes. So maybe not quite as long as an orthopedic treatment. Again, that depends on how much gas you have in your tank, how much energy you have, um, you know, rest breaks are included. And then it's going to be based on the deficiencies that we found in the, the previous assessments that we were talking about. So during the evaluation, you get to know your therapist. We do all the tests that are needed to constitute whether you're at a risk for falling. Um, and sometimes people think they're at a risk for falling and they're actually not too bad. Um, but they just need to, to know what to do at home to maintain their function. So, um, you know, if you're not, if you think, eh, maybe I'm not at too much of a risk for falling, but you still have some concerns, still get evaluated if, if you want to. And then, um, you know, the therapist can, can help put together a program for you. The treatment, uh, I usually like to have some aerobic exercise um, to build a cardiovascular endurance, some basic lower extremity strengthening. Uh, we do pretty much all of this in a standing position. Um, so, you know, having you sit in a chair and do exercises or lay down on the table and do exercises are probably not as beneficial for someone who's at a fall risk, right? We want to get them up on their feet. We can use a gate belt if needed, um, which is just like a big handy dandy belt to, to keep you safe, um, but get you on your feet. We'll do the, the balance exercises, thinking um, static to dynamic balance, and then any vestibular exercises if you're having dizziness. So what we do, we treat you for eight to 12 visits. And then if your goals are met, if you're happy and we're happy, then we give you some exercises to continue. If we're not quite there, then we do a progress note. And as long as progress is being made, then you can continue. We submit, submit that to uh, the insurance and to your physician. And then once we feel uh, that you feel uh, safe and we feel that you've met your goals, then we discharge you to a home exercise program. So I found this picture online when I was putting this uh, presentation together. Uh, you know, it's what appears to be an, an older lady and she's holding, um, it looks like laundry detergent, um, big bottles of laundry detergent each side, as you can see. So, you know, how cool is that, that, you know, she's doing sit to stands with weights in her hand. So, you know, it's it's very easy to say I can or I'm, I'm too old and, and really age is just a state of mind. So staying active, finding things you love to do, uh, that picture was, was really neat to see. So uh, we talked about treatment should be done on your feet. If you can't stand from a chair without using your arms, then we raise the chair. So we want to get you used to using your legs. If you've seen someone, um, who's very weak, it, it's standing is almost completely an arm exercise. So um, we can raise using an adjustable table or we can add different uh, pads to the chair so that you can physically stand just using your legs. And that's a good starting point. And then more long-term, can you stand up from the floor? You know, sometimes people will say, Ryan, I haven't fallen, but I'm scared if I fall, I can't get up from the floor. Uh, so that is, um, you know, something that we can work on too. Introductory weight shifting exercises. So the gentleman in the picture on the left, he's doing some forward and backwards weight shifting. 
Um, he's moving his arms. I probably would start that without your arms just to get used to what your ankles are doing. And then on the right side, it's, you know, a medial lateral, so moving side to side, weight shifting. So very basic. You can progress that, bringing the feet together to uh, narrow your base of support. And then you could also progress it by trying this with your eyes closed to reduce the visual stimulation uh, and feedback there. And then you could even incorporate head movement um, for a vestibular component. So there's really a lot of different things we can do with weight shifting. Um, as far as your actual uh, feet on the floor, so we talked about your Romberg stance is your feet together. So that's the picture on the left. You can move into a semi-tandem stance. That's going to make it a little more challenging, moving one foot slightly in front of another. You'd be surprised that actually makes uh, makes it uh, a fair amount more challenging. A full tandem stance is one foot in front of the other, and of course, balancing on one leg. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of just focusing on balancing on one leg. Um, I think there's a lot of other exercises that we can do that um, have less risk, more reward. Um, but again, some people focus on the, on balancing on one one leg. So um, we're utilizing the ankle, hip, and stepping strategies to improve reaction time and confidence. Um, confidence is a good word. We, we definitely want you to know what you're capable of. So when you're done with physical therapy, you, at the very least, you'll know what you can do and you can do. And when people start therapy, they're, they're really not sure about that sometimes. These are some pictures of more dynamic movement. Um, they're actually pulled from a type of treatment called big treatment or LVST treatment for Parkinson's. But again, the same movements apply. Can you move your body through dynamic positions and, and maintain your balance, maintain your stability? So these are often done repeated. So you may do that for one minute or two minutes or three minutes and the therapist will guide you. And through that repetition, it really helps to retrain uh, your body's sense of balance and uh, your uh, limits of stability. The stabilier treatment, that's more individualized. The, the picture on the left is what we call times one viewing. So the uh, person is looking at a target, moving their head side to side, and keeping the eyes on the target at all times. And there's ways to progress that exercise. So, you know, if someone's complaining of imbalance associated with sudden movement, we're going to think more of vestibular exercises to do. Uh, you also can do um, walking with head nods and turns. Uh, so think of you're in a grocery store, you're walking down the aisle, you know, can you maintain the pace that you're walking and look at the shelves? Or do you need to stop walking to see what's on the shelf? Things like that. Eyes closed. We, uh, at, for, po for folks that have imbalance, we tend to become a little uh, visual dependent. So getting people to balance with that visual stimulus uh, is actually really a good way to maintain our balance as we age. So uh, just some things that the therapist might do. We talked about proprioception earlier. So, you know, other than discussing with your doctor, really the, the only thing that therapists can do um, to help with proprioception is, is what's called a, a rebuilder unit. Not, not all PT clinics have this, but it's using electric stimulation with warm water and a saline solution to help to try and give sensation to an area that does not have full sensation. So um, by the stimulus through the water, um, it can help in some patients, they, they do get some good results. But as always, it does not work for everyone. But that would be uh, if the therapist deems appropriate and that clinic has a rebuilder unit, that would be something done at the end of the treatment. So when to seek help? Um, you know, if you've suffered two falls or one with an injury, I think that's certainly a point to seek help. Um, and again, you know, is it a true fall to the floor or are there some near misses? Um, you know, you can use your judgment, but I think that's, uh, you know, sometimes people will come in for say a shoulder evaluation and it's like, well, what happened to your shoulder? Oh, well, I fell down and hurt it. You know, well, that's kind of a flag to the therapist. And I'll just say to the person, Hey, why don't we do one or two balance exercises as we get your shoulder better? And most patients are okay with that. 
if someone has a fear of falling, um, that's also, so if you haven't had any falls, but you're so fearful of falling, maybe you heard of your neighbor who fell and bad things happen and it, you're just so nervous. I think that's certainly something physical therapy can help with. And um, once you gain the trust of your therapist and, and they work with you, you know, you can really make uh, large improvements in your quality of life. Feeling unsteady. Um, so some of these are questions that we'll ask during the evaluation. Do you have a fear of falling? Do you feel unsteady? Have you had any falls in the past year? Um, new onset dizziness. Uh, remember, dizziness is not normal. Uh, so if you're having dizziness, try and seek some treatment for that. We have not talked uh, too much about osteopenia or osteoporosis, but uh, if you're over the age of 65, hopefully you've had a, a bone density scan and that's something you could talk to your family doctor about. Um, if you fall 1.5% uh, below what's considered normal, you have osteopenia, and 2.5% or greater, you have osteoporosis. And those set you up for a higher risk of fracture, which of course can happen when you fall. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that your balance is as good as possible. And actually, aerobic exercise is shown to uh, help stay the course and prevent these conditions. So again, your therapist can help give you a, an exercise program if you need one. Moderate to severe change in vision or hearing. So, uh, you know, again, it's it's um, we all have this as we age. Our vision gets worse, our hearing gets worse. But if there's a, a, a rapid change, you have some type of condition uh, that results in, in a rapid change that I think would be worthwhile in, in making sure that your balance is as good as it can be. Um, uh, you know, when you're looking through um, glasses that, that have changed or I, I just, these are things I've picked up over the years, you know, you just want to pay attention to that. Progressive neuropathy. Um, again, if you have neuropathy where say you can't feel your feet at all, um, you still have your inner ear to help with your balance. You still have your vision. There's different ways to habituate, to kind of um, come up with different solutions on, on your balance. So um, not all is lost, even for someone who has neuropathy. And then just some other things. Um, I do mention a lot of local libraries, uh, senior centers have Tai Chi, uh, which Tai Chi is just a way to get your body moving. Um, so that's something if you're like, eh, I don't know about physical therapy, or maybe I don't feel like I'm quite appropriate for it. Uh, that's something that I do mention um, to folks. Having realistic expectations, you know, um, I want to be able to be a gymnast in the next Olympics. So well, that might not be a realistic expectation. So let's let's focus on short term goals. You know, let's get you standing up from a chair without having to use your arms, or let's get you to stand in condition to balance with your feet together and eyes closed for thirty seconds. And then we'll build from there. So definitely uh, consult your local PT. Um, we're going to have an evidence-based treatment plan supported by objective measures and assessment to help you. Um, hopefully this PowerPoint was informative. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please email us. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your night. Um, and I hope you have a good one. Thank you.